Well, I guess I won't be needing these. Just a 10 year old dream, dust in the wind. So it's been 10 years since the death of Warhammer Fantasy, and now it's back in the form of the Old World. And last weekend, the Old World finally launched. Well, it sort of launched. Pre-orders were available to buy. All the influencers started showing off the free minis that Games Workshop had sent them, and the review embargoes finally ended. It was basically the launch weekend for the hype cycle. And now Games Workshop have sold all of their boxes, and soon enough we'll be back talking about Space Marines once again, and Warhammer Fantasy will essentially be forgotten about in the zeitgeist. Except there were some issues last weekend that I think are going to be with us for a while. Things seem to have gone very wrong for the old world, and now there's a lot of drama and scandal in the Warhammer fantasy community, which it's kind of weird, honestly. The launch weekend should have been huge. Warhammer Fantasy, after all, is the seminal war game. It's the first Warhammer game. It has been a flagship Games Workshop product since like 1983. It arguably has a better setting than Warhammer 40k. People have been begging for its re-release for a decade now, and it is more popular than ever before. The Warhammer Fantasy setting has spawned some incredibly popular videos games since it was destroyed. For example, the massively popular Warhammer Total War series, but it's also had some cult hits like Vermintide and uh, Vermintide 2. This weekend should have been a massive celebration of the rebirth of a classic. Young gamers, old gamers, the French, all hand in hand together enjoying this new old game in a warm bundle of positivity. <laughs> so why then does the old world internet space have the atmosphere of the Red Wedding? Well, let me explain, because like the Red Wedding, it all started with a betrayal. Days before the old world products were ready to launch, the prices were leaked online. And to say that people weren't happy about those prices is maybe a bit of an understatement. It turns out that when you plan to charge $60 for 20 year old models, uh -huh, people get a little ornery. But that was a price leak for retailers. People grumbled, but they were willing to wait and see what the full launch weekend would bring them. I'll put the grumble level at Beardling for now. But then a round table from the developers of the old world was posted by Games Workshop in the lead up to the final launch. This roundtable consisted of famous Games Workshop developers, Jonathan, Rob, Giorgio, Holly, Dan, and uh other Dan. I guess there's just no way to distinguish any of these designers from one another. It turns out that Games Workshop's refusal to credit any of their creatives extends even to their blog posts. But this roundtable was extremely controversial because it contained a snippet of information that devastated a lot of people. See, it turns out that a bunch of factions from Warhammer Fantasy, some of the coolest and major fan favorites from back in the day will not be supported in the old world. That means that if you were someone who collected Skaven, Vampire Counts, Dark Elves, Lizardmen, Ogres, Demons of Chaos, and Chaos Dwarves, then you're shit out of luck. Go home. The old world isn't for you. You're going to get a perfunctory stats PDF and then told to off. And for a lot of people who collected those armies in Warhammer Fantasy and maybe even still collect those armies or bought a bunch of them to play in the old world, Skiven in my case, this was uh, pretty bad news to get four days before the rulebook was available to pre-order. Especially if you had like paid eBay prices for some of these Skiven models in the weeks before. Now in fairness to Games Workshop, they had said that certain factions like Bretonia would be the focus of the old world. They said this like six months ago in a Warhammer community post, but the tone back then was very different from the tone in this recent roundtable. See, originally the claim was that certain factions will be in the spotlight. They'll be getting the focus. This made it sound like the Bretonians would be getting new models. But in the most recent roundtable, it sounded more like the Skiven just wouldn't be playable. It was less, this pub wouldn't be your scene, and more like, we don't allow 
figure type in here. They said this in the roundtable, quote, These factions will not feature in terms of game rules, model ranges, and background narrative. They won't be considered legal for tournaments and won't receive ongoing support, i.e. 40% of players can go chuck themselves in a bin. Now, yes, those factions will be getting a legacy rules PDF that they can download, but Games Workshop have confirmed that that's it. They won't be getting updated as the game continues on. And this has upset quite a lot of people. Now, some others have argued that this is fine, that you can continue to play those armies with the PDF rules, and sure, you can't play them at official Warhammer tournaments, but most fan tournaments will still allow those factions, whether or not they're a legacy army or not. And sure, okay, that that's fair. But legacy armies like Skiven are going to quickly fall behind actual supported armies like the Bretonians and Tomb Kings, and no one is going to play them or want to play against them. This is inevitable. Warhammer has really bad power creep. It's part of its design. And in a year, there's going to be no one playing any legacy armies. Don't believe me? Well, how many people do you see playing Bretonia in Age of Sigmar? Oh, didn't you know? Bretonia have rules in Age of Sigmar. They just haven't been updated in years, and therefore no one plays them. Bretonia are a legacy army. And unless something changes, that is the fate of almost half the Warhammer Fantasy roster. So yeah, that didn't go down well. But then on top of that, we found out that to play the old world, you would need to buy not just a single rulebook, not just two rulebooks, not just three rulebooks, not just four rulebooks, but five different rulebooks. You can buy five different books right now for the old world. It hasn't even launched yet. For this game, you're gonna need to buy more rulebooks than you'd buy for a university course. So let's run through these real quick. You've got the rulebook with the rules and the special traits. That's number one. Then you've got your two faction books. One for the good guys, whatever that means in Warhammer Fantasy. I assume they're talking about the bloodthirsty maniacs that ride down peasants on their horses for fun. Yeah, they're definitely the goodies. And then one for the evil factions. Again, whatever that means in Warhammer Fantasy. I I assume they're talking about the nation state of undead that is a despotic system admittedly but otherwise is run like any other it just happens to be undead so that's three books overall but then on top of those there's two more supplements one for the tomb king specifically and one for Bretonia specifically so five books overall now okay you're not gonna need all five to play the game I'm exaggerating there technically if you play a faction like the Empire you could probably get away with just two books and then presumably another one down the line when their specific supplement comes out. So just buy the rule book, buy the faction book, I assume Empire in the Evil book, and then, you know, just the supplement book. But that's all assuming that you have no interest whatsoever in learning about what any other army can do in the game that you play. What can the good guys do? I don't care, I play Skiven. Oh wait, no, that's right, I'm not even in one of the books. And launching the game with this many books when people have been begging Games Workshop to catch up to the 21st century and release their rules and stats online for free like most other war game companies, it has just totally rubbed the Warhammer Fantasy community the wrong way. It feels like the opposite direction of where the game should be going. Last year, I was at Warhammer Fest and I asked there if the faction rules in Old World would be free PDFs and the answer at that time was no. And I sort of expected that, but what I didn't expect is that there would be a faction book for two different ontological moral categories and then army specific books on top of those two. That, I'll be honest, took me by surprise. But hey, at least the discontinued armies get their rules for free, so there's that at least. Yay, Skiven players! <laughs> Now, I'm not opposed to fun faction rules and lore books being sold or whatever. It's just like, why five books and no way to access these rules online? I thought that this whole project was meant to be a remaster, not a return to 2005. So that reveal has caused a lot of drama and it sort of cast a dark cloud over the launch of the game and it all led to a lot of arguing online. But then the actual pre-order release date happened and everything got worse. 
See, while Warhammer The Old World has been very hotly anticipated, it seems like it has been anticipated by everyone except for Games Workshop because they appear to have chronically understocked the game. Lots and lots of people woke up on Saturday right at the launch of The Old World in the wee hours of 10 a.m. eager to buy their new corset only to find themselves in an online queue and deposited into the new hellish Games Workshop website only to find that everything Old World had sold out in a matter of minutes. Meaning that if you weren't quick, you weren't up at basically the crack of dawn, you got nothing. But hey, at least there were plenty of these Pegasus Knights still to buy no matter what time you logged in. I mean, sure, it's three 20-year-old plastic night models for £37.50, but hey, it's something. Still though, these were a small consolation for people who have waited a decade for the moment to buy Warhammer Fantasy again and then missed out just because there wasn't enough stock to meet demand. Yeah, that has bothered a lot of people in the Warhammer Fantasy community. This wasn't an unforeseeable event. Games Workshop knew this would happen, that the launch would sell out pretty fast. There clearly is an appetite for Warhammer Fantasy, as I have always maintained on this channel. And I believe that there is a huge potential audience for this game. But the release this weekend was pretty conservative, with some third-party stores claiming that they were sent as little as four core box sets to sell to their audience. Clearly, not enough boxes were produced to satisfy demand. And to be frank, every Warhammer release sells out prematurely these days anyway. Games Workshop chronically understock their product because they don't want it sitting on shelves. This creates a mad rush, a lot of FOMO based on hype and ultimately is a breeding ground for scalping. But hey, the products sell out and that means that Games Workshop don't have a lot of stock sitting around. It does mean, however, that we're left with a lot of angry people. But one upside here is that Games Workshop didn't make the Old World Core box sets a limited edition available only for the launch weekend. Because if they had done that, the tone of this video would have been very different. So these boxes can't be bought again, eventually. I mean, they're still out of stock as I record this, and when will there be more? Who knows? Could be weeks, it could be months, and by then, let's be honest, the hype for the old world will be gone. But at least the game has sold well enough right now that the old world has a long lifespan ahead of it, and many future releases, right? Well... <sighs> That's not clear either. See, this weekend was all the mega fans of Warhammer Fantasy buying up the three shelves worth of product. These are people who played Warhammer Fantasy before and they have been waiting desperately to get back into the game. What's not clear to anyone is how many new, younger players are particularly interested in this. Games Workshop have done a bang up job of getting old world product into the hands of lots of influencers and advertising the game. But in like a week's time, there's going to be all new 40k reveals and we'll be talking about that soon enough. Meanwhile, the old world is going to be left as an online only purchasing experience and a very expensive one at that because yeah, we're gonna need to talk about the price of old world. It's not helping at all. In the UK, the price of the core sets aren't too bad. It's £155 for 76 miniatures. For Games Workshop, that's not the worst. It's still a big ask for a lot of people, it's a lot of money to drop on something and you can pick up similarly sized sets like the Kings of War Mega Armies from Mathy Games for around £115, almost a third cheaper. So I think that the core sets for the old world are too expensive. I'd chop at least 20 quid from them, making them closer to £135. Remember, there are 76 models in these boxes, but they're old enough to drink. They need to be cheap. And the core boxes are just the beginning because they provide a discounted price on the miniatures inside. When you look at the price of individual old world products, the prices become very quickly very embarrassing. Like your uncle at that Christmas party this year. So let's go back to those Pegasus Knights that I mentioned at the beginning of this video as an example. So these are £37.50 for three. These Pegasus Knights guarantee that this game is dead, at least amongst anyone that isn't already enamored with the setting and remembers playing 
Spain with these specific models 15 years ago. See, I think that these models look good personally, but they are not £37.50 for three models good. And I don't think that anyone outside of the Games Workshop and Counting Department thinks that either. I would feel bad about paying this price for any models, but these are hard plastic. They aren't even resin or metal, and they are far too old to charge this price. And of course, this is talking about UK prices. This is all in pounds sterling. This is the best value the Games Workshop offer. Skip across the pond and things get really bad. Americans inexplicably have to pay $60 for these three models, a full £10 more than the Irish and East Irish. Then if we take a journey down south to Australia, they're 105 Australian dollars. For the UK audience here, that's £55 for three old models. That's absurd. It's 433 Australian dollars for an old world core set down there. That's 223 pounds, meaning that it's cheaper for Australians to have someone buy a core box in the UK and ship it to them personally. It's cheaper to pay scalpers for their attic finds on eBay. These prices are delusional, especially in the US and Australia, and everyone knows that. These prices just aren't justified by the models on offer, and they don't reflect the market rate. And unsurprisingly, the community isn't exactly happy with this. And I totally agree. To me, the main advantage of Games Workshop doing the old world is that A, it's a fun new game to play. I always love to play new games. Whether or not that's true of the old world remains to be seen. I hope it is fun, but I haven't played Warhammer Fantasy since like 2008 or so. I'm not sure if it's going to hold up compared to all the new games that have come out since then. But then there's also B, that this could result in way more people available to play rank and flank war games like Warhammer Fantasy in my local game store. And I think that that would be a really cool cool result. There's lots of really awesome rank and flank games, and there's a bunch of really cool Warhammer Fantasy models that I look forward to picking up again. But a high price for these miniatures will gatekeep a lot of people out of this game, and essentially undermine that second goal, the most important one to me. So that really concerns me, and I can see how conflicted it has made the Warhammer Fantasy community online. You can look in any Warhammer Fantasy space right now. There is a lot of celebration. There's lots of people getting really excited to paint Warhammer Fantasy again, and this is all really cool. But then there's loads of baffling decisions from Games Workshop that has cast a pall over the whole return of Warhammer Fantasy and caused a lot of drama. There's tons of posts bemoaning the stock allocation, the prices, the dropping of half the factions. And for me, I think that Games Workshop need to resolve this. They need to reduce the prices of the model kits. They need to support the other half of the factions. And I also think they need to revisit their bizarre decisions decision to categorize Warhammer Fantasy factions in the reductive terms of good and evil. I don't even know what that means. Is the Empire evil? They're, they're, they're religious extremists who tax sausages. That's evil in my book, but I don't know. What do you think? Are you excited for Old World? Do you think that it can get past all these issues? Let me know in the comments below and check out my thoughts on the new miniatures for the Old World here. And if you're interested in horror miniatures games, then you can check out the demo for one of those over my Patreon right now. I Patreon patreon.com slash discourse minis. And I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoKev, Novini, and Travis Hunter. And happy 2024. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.